I'm gonna show you how to rank for the keyword phrase best barbecue in St. Louis using a random URL that's ranking on page two. Let's dive right in. Okay, so one of the best ways to improve your performance on any given page that you're trying to rank is to simply upgrade it, make it more current, make it fresh, and then republish it so that Google can see that it is actually a fresh piece of content. So what you're gonna see here is while we're looking at this page, there's a couple of things, and I'm gonna be tackling the various things on this page, but as far as freshness, there's one issue that I'm seeing right away, which is right in this little section, there should be a date, okay? We wanna have a visible date on this page so that we make it clear to Google that this page is current, right? And so just based on this alone, this is already problematic, right? So we need to have that date in there, we need to know when this was, when this was published, and we need to know if it's up to date, okay? So just a small little change, but it makes a big difference. Now, looking at this page, the question is, how do you know if this page is updated or not, if it's current? Well, there's a couple a couple ways to really find out. So the first is you can look at the page itself and just see like, are they are they using old years? Are they using incorrect years? Things of that nature. Next thing is you can actually go to archive.org and just see when was the last time that this has even been updated. Okay, so I went back to archive.org and I, it looks like this was published in 2018 or so, 2018, 2019. And if you look at it, it's exactly the same as it is right now. It's had virtually no updates. The content is exactly the same, okay? So that is a very long time to not update a piece of content. I mean, we're talking, you know, five years here, five years, almost five years without a single update to this page. So you think about Google looking at this, it's like, okay, well, this page must not be the most up-to-date resource for this keyword. And it's actually pretty amazing that this keyword is actually ranking as well as it is, or this page is ranking as well as it is despite being not updated you know, very well, okay? So that's one thing to think about is we need to try to create the most updated piece of content. So you need to put it in your procedures and your, the way that you operate. Like I would be thinking about every, at least annually, re-examine your content and, and ask, are, is there any way that we can make this page better? Is there any way that we can upgrade it or update it to make it you know, current, right? And I know some people at the beginning of the year, they go into their content, they just update the year. I don't recommend doing that unless you've actually made a change, okay? So make a change, even if it's small, add a little extra paragraph, take out one of these, you know, these rankings here that um, is outdated. Like we have this right here, right? Barbecue Saloon doesn't even exist, all right? We click on this, completely gone. All right, so you think about people that are on this page, like this is this is problematic. And it's not just one, we have multiple images here, multiple accounts that are just not, they don't even exist anymore. At least those posts don't exist anymore. So this is just, over time, this is what's gonna happen to content. That's why you gotta stay on top of it, okay? So that's the first thing is, first just look at, is this content up to date? Second thing you can do too is actually go up here and you can inspect element. This is my little, my little uh, trick for seeing if a, a post is updated, and trust me, Google can do this too because it can crawl this, this information. You can look at the date, okay? So when I actually updated a post on Gotcha SEO, I updated this post, uh, SEO benchmarks, okay? And this post right here, this is obviously personalized, but I, I'm pretty sure it's ranking like one or two, all right? But this post was the same exact article with the same URL since 2015 or so. And I just republished it, it, it you know, less than a year ago. Uh, and what I did is I literally rebuilt this entire thing from scratch. I just scrapped the old one and started completely new. And what I did, you know, of course, all the copy changing is a, it has a big influence, but also I update every single image on top of it. Because I, like I said, I want Google to see that this is a completely fresh piece of content. And so I'll look at this one, you'll inspect and you'll see that it's, it's close to the current date. But once you start to get like five years old or older, then it's probably a good idea to go through and start to upgrade and update. And I can tell you, as soon as I, as soon as I relaunched this post, I didn't even promote it, uh, it, it shot right back up to number one, number two. Um, so just to give an idea of how powerful it is, and I've done this, I cannot tell you how many times I've done this. You just re, you rebuild the asset, you make it fresh, you make it better than it was before, you republish it, and Google does tend to reward you for that. Now, of course, you need to go out there and link build and do all the things that are necessary, you need to market it, but still, there is a huge benefit from, from tapping into this, this freshness algorithm, okay? 
So if we go back here too, so obviously we talked about not having the, the date here, which we should have. We talked about outdated images, outdated content. There's one other thing too, we scroll down here, actually see in the footer 2021 on top of it, all right? So you can, you can make this update automatically, but like this small little thing, like this is being broadcast across the entire website. So you're basically signaling to Google that my entire website is outdated. Right. And I know it seems really petty and really small, but I guess I'm a little more, a little crazier than the average person when it comes to this. But I still think it needs every little detail matters on your website, every little detail. So this is simple. It's a simple change. Anyone can do this. Right. But this is just, this is what Google's looking at. It wants to see who's the freshest result here for this keyword. Right. Google wants to show the best and the freshest for any keyword that you're going after. Okay. One other thing you can do too, is if you go into, into the website auditor, go to pages, you search for St. Louis, and then go to in-link rank. You can obviously see some various things here about internal linkings, but one thing you can do if you look down here, a couple things, you can look at links to the page. So you can look at specific internal links that are going to this page, okay? Which is helpful, right? It's very helpful. But one thing you can look at too is if you're trying to get a quick analysis, you just go to images. And once again, we can see all of the outdated images here on this post, okay? 2018, it's all 2018. Even the logo is 2018. So, you know, I would, you know, every year you should probably be updating your logo to make sure it's current. Um, so, like I said, these things, they seem petty, but when you combine them together, there is this kind of compound effect. That brings us to the next SEO technique, which is to upgrade before you optimize. Okay, so you know the importance of creating the most fresh and up-to-date piece of content, okay? That's absolutely critical. But now what we're gonna talk about is before you ever think about even optimizing a page, like if you go in here and you're gonna say, I'm gonna just use Surfer, or I'm gonna use some on-page SEO tool to optimize this. I don't recommend doing that, especially for a post that's been around for a long time. I would immediately just skip to upgrading, right? We, we upgrade first. Once it's upgraded and we think that we have one of the best assets for this keyword, then we talk about optimization, okay? So we start with the angle, we start with the content, and we start there and we get that right. We have to get that right and then we move into optimize. So the question is, how do we, how do we make this post better, all right? And so if we think about Google's EEAT guidelines, we know it's experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, okay? Out of all of those factors, one of them really is important on the content level, especially when you're doing any type of list posts or reviews, uh, talking about restaurants, talking about products, talking about services, anything like that, okay? Experience, the first E in there is critical. You need to be able to demonstrate firsthand experience with whatever you're reviewing, whatever list posts you're making. Actually go and try the barbecue. You don't need to be a culinary expert. You just go and try the barbecue and give your experience. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you love? What, did, what didn't you love? Okay, this is what it takes these days to really dominate. Even the relevance, right? We wanna make this the most relevant piece of content imaginable. So when I look at this, you're telling me this is the best barbecue in St. Louis, but then you show me a picture of just downtown St. Louis. All right, I, I don't really connect with that, right? I wanna see some big, huge rack of ribs right here, okay? I wanna see those ribs. I want it to look delicious. I wanna get excited about going to these barbecue places in St. Louis, right? But when I see this, I'm like, ooh, government building and the arch. Yeah, that's not super cool because I came here for barbecue. So make this relevant to what the topic is. You wanna see something here that's like, whoa, those ribs look incredible. And then you scroll down because you want to see where those ribs actually came from, right, in St. Louis, all right? So small little things make a big difference. There's no author box. Very easy thing to do. Just add a little author box and talk about why you're qualified to, uh, to ultimately review barbecue places, okay? And it's as simple as I've tried every single barbecue place in St. Louis. I've tried barbecue places in Kansas City and Nashville. And I can tell you I am an expert in barbecue. There's not a single way to actually share this post. Like if I liked your post and it was awesome and I wanted to share it on Facebook or I wanted to share it on Twitter or whatever else, there's no way to do it. Not a single social sharing button here for me to share it. So basically what you've done is even if you rank 
uh, and you have an amazing piece of content, you're missing out on an enormous amount of opportunity to send positive signals to this page. There's a lot of debate about you know social media signals being uh, actual ranking factors. I'm not gonna get into that, but more I look at it as these are positive signals for this page. Like if you're looking at you versus your competitors and Google, you know, you're exactly the same, right? Everyone has the like incredible content and Google's trying to figure out what's gonna be that difference maker. Well, obviously links are number one, right? Whoever has the most links is probably gonna do best. Whoever has the best, sorry, the most relevant and best links will do best. But let's say everyone has the best content, everyone has the best links, all things are equal. Well, the next signal they might look at is like, okay, well, this one page has like an enormous amount of social virality on it, has tons of Facebook shares, tons of Pinterest shares, whatever it may be. Uh, and then this one has nothing, just a big goose egg when it comes to social proof. Well, to me, it really looks sketchy if you have a bunch of links, right? You have a bunch of links, which Google knows SEOs love to build, love to artificially build, but you have zero social presence. No one on social shared this. There's a disconnect there, right? So a page that has a lot of links doesn't necessarily get a lot of social shares and vice versa, but usually if it has a lot of links, there'll at least be some social shares, okay? <laughs> like if you have zero, there's probably something a little off there. So just add some social sharing buttons here. And if you've created a good piece of content, you will get social shares just organically. Okay, so I've already briefly talked about the importance of expertise and some of the key things that you can do. And obviously, you should prioritize experience first because you wanna make sure we're demonstrating real experience in our content, okay? First-hand experience with these products that we're reviewing, these restaurants, whatever it is. We have to do that. But then we also have to make it abundantly clear that we have subject matter expertise. And this does not just apply to your money, your life. This applies to any industry. It doesn't matter whether you have a website about funny cat pictures or a website about barbecue, okay? Or a website about something, you know, that's actually in your money, your life. This should just be your general standard for any website that you're trying to ultimately improve for SEO, but more importantly, for any website that you're trying to increase the level of trust for that website. That's really what the beauty is of the EAT guidelines. And like, you know, I'm not, I don't agree with everything that Google does, but I think that these guidelines are really useful in, in the respect that they force you to think about how can I make my website appear more trustworthy to the users, right? And that's what we're doing. We want to make it very, very trustworthy and needs to be very clear. So there, there, there's some stuff happening here that I think is good, but I think it needs to be improved. So the first thing is, you know, having a little sidebar here that has the person is definitely a good idea. Like right away, we see there's a person here that actually does this. The problem is like when we do a reverse image search of this, I, I couldn't find that this is a legitimate person, right? It, it looks like maybe it's a some sort of stock photo. This could even be AI generated. Maybe this is actually the person, but you know, my name is Tim, you know, just using their first name. It's just a little, I don't want to say sketchy, but it just doesn't look as legitimate um, as you know, a, a real personalized website. Okay, so this is the right idea, just kind of the wrong execution. All right, wrong execution. Then on top of it, having this in the sidebar right away about the Amazon affiliate program just screams that this is just an affiliate website. Okay, you can have this disclaimer, but I would throw it way down here in the footer. Like I'd link to it and I'd link to the affiliate disclaimer and then talk about it. But you don't need to have this front loaded up here so everyone can see it because this doesn't add any value to the content. So I would avoid that altogether. Uh, but yeah, having this little sidebar thing is great. This is a good, quick, like at a glance, someone can see this is a real person, whether it is or not, isn't, you know, I, I don't know, but this is a good, a good idea. Now, next thing is, is going to the about page, all right? Having an about page, a deep about page, is really, really important. So once again, looking at this, it's not very deep, right? We should go much deeper. We should talk about the story behind this website, the story why Tim just absolutely, uh, you know, has put his heart and his soul into barbecue, okay? We need to see everything. And then on top of it, externally, to add even more trust, we need to see that there's some actual social profiles built around this brand, right? There's no there's no indication that there's any social profiles for barbecue smarts. There's no indication that there's social profiles for 
Tim, Nelson in particular, okay? So we wanna make sure that that's really clear, really obvious right on the site. This is just, this is how we can keep adding to the levels of trust, all right? And so then we look at this about page, one thing you can look at too is look at the schema markup, right? So we'll look at the schema and we'll see, you know, there's no about page schema on this. Uh, there's no person schema on this. There's just really not any schema at all. And in fact, even if we go to the site itself, we'll see, does this have any schema markup? And it doesn't, it's not, it's not even marked up as an organization. It's not marked up as an individual. So once again, that's just another quick way to at a glance see that the site is more trustworthy than you know, kind of a generic affiliate website. Now, just to take this to the next level, those are kind of on-site signals that make it really clear. Uh, so if we go back here, some obvious ones, we got a nice, this is good. We wanna have the author up here, who this is written by, the date that it was published, Scroll down here, bare minimum, we wanna have an author box, just explains why you're qualified and you're a subject matter expert. Uh, and then I'd also, personally, I like to add an editorial guidelines page. So you can go into ChatGPT and ask it to write an editorial guidelines page for you and then you just throw that onto your site, put it in the footer, and now you just add another level of credibility. Talking about you know what is your process that you go through when you when you review barbecue places or you write about barbecue, right? Just make that make that really clear. And then of course an about me page. This is great. Um, I I like having kind of two different about sections. So you'll have the the straight about page that's about the brand as a whole. So you have you know it's about barbecue smarts, why it exists, what its mission is, da 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 da. And then you can have a dedicated section on the same page that talks about Tim Nelson and why he's qualified to write about barbecue. Okay, you could do that, or you could create a dedicated page specifically for Tim Nelson if he has a pretty extensive background. Okay, and then that would just be like slash Tim Nelson or Tim Nelson, Tim Nelson or about Tim Nelson. Okay, now that's those are the higher level things you can do right away. Uh, but then, you know, externally, you know, Google's looking at more than just the on-site signals. It's going to look externally too. So what you can do is you can go into Google and do a quick search, put in the name and then put in barbecue. Okay. And what I want to see right away is like, is this person, are there any external signals that this person is legitimate? Right. I, I and based on what I'm seeing here, the answer is no, right. The, it, he might be the best person on barbecue in the entire world, right? But at this point, there's nothing in entirely clear here that demonstrates that he's legit, right? Now we'll do the opposite. Like we do mine, and this is only because I've been in the industry. I've been in the SEO industry for over 10 years. So like, this isn't really a fair analysis, but just to show you like Nathan Gotch plus SEO, okay? Like you're gonna obviously find my site and we can actually, we'll take we'll take Gotch SEO out of there. Uh, but what you're gonna see is like, there's stuff about me right? There's stuff about SEO and, and me. Uh, and, and it's very clear that like I'm in this industry and, uh, you know, there's, it, there's a clear indication that I'm a legit person. Okay. Um, and then if we go and look at some other things, like if we look at my, my actual personal website, just to go back to this schema idea, um, you'll see here, if we go to the schema, you'll see I actually have an about page schema and I have a person schema. All right. So if you go to the person schema, you'll see, you know, it has all the stuff about me and then it has same as, which shows the various profiles that are related to me. If we go over here, we'll look at the about page schema and you'll see once again, all this, all this information that's about me that just proves that I'm a legitimate person. This information matches up with other details online. Okay. Um, once again, schema on its own is not going to do a whole lot, but it's just another signal for building trust and ultimately for informing Google, giving them the right information, right? We got to give Google the right information. And then if we go to Gotcha SEO, this is another example. Like if you, if you do this in the same way that I've done it, you know, I have it here and we go to about, this is about Gotcha SEO. So in this case, this would be about barbecue smarts and you talk about all the stuff, why I'm qualified, you know, all the good stuff. And then I go to a dedicated page that's specifically about me, okay? This one's about me. It goes through my whole story, da, 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 all right? The whole point of this is to prove that I am a legitimate person and I'm qualified to write about this topic, all right? So that's all you're trying to do. We just wanna make it so clear. It shouldn't be like, is this person legit or are they not? Like if you have to ask that question, then that's a real problem. Make it clear, make it really, really clear. Um, and so it's not super difficult, but you can, and in fact, just so you know, you can have ChatGPT write you an about page. Like you don't have to do it. Just input your qualifications 
uh, and then say, hey, write me an about page bio based on the details below. And then you just put some bullet points about why you're qualified. And then it will produce something that's pretty decent. Uh, it, will, it won't be as good as if you have some experience writing, but it will still be decent enough to put on your site. So that's what you have to do to make sure you have, you've really tackled this expertise part of the equation. The next SEO technique is to take your on-page SEO to the next level. Okay, so let's just assume that this content is already upgraded and it's where it needs to be. Obviously, you know, based on what I previously said, I think you should rebuild this content from scratch, but let's just assume that it's where it needs to be. So what we'd wanna do now is we wanna actually go and perform on-page SEO and really do this the right way. So before I ever even jump into Surfer, or try to optimize with natural language processing or NLP, I don't even think about any of that. The first thing I wanna do is I just wanna take this content and I wanna put it through Hemingway Editor, okay? I wanna see how well is this content written, okay? And ultimately, I just don't wanna see a whole lot of red. I don't wanna see sentences that are very hard to read, okay? Some sentences that are slightly hard to read, okay, not a huge deal, but when we start to look at this, this content, there's room for improvement, okay? A lot of room for improvement. So before I put this into Grammarly, I always clean it up here first. And once it's cleaned up here, the content's really lean, is, is really high quality and snappy, then I throw it through Grammarly, okay? And with Grammarly, our minimum criteria is a 95, right? It has to be a 95. Any content we're trying to rank has to be a 95 on Grammarly, okay? It's just what my team knows, that's what I know. It just seems to work really well. So you go through, you clean it all up, simple as that, right? There's no point of optimizing something that isn't even edited well, right? We need to edit things first, get it clean. If you go over into the page audit and go to content audit inside the website auditor tool, you'll see that there's a higher level kind of analysis that you can do here. So looking at the various things, making sure the keywords in all the appropriate spots. And so right away we can see that, you know, the keyword is actually not showing up in the body at all, right? It's not mentioning best barbecue in St. Louis. Now this could be because, you know, sometimes there's a period uh, at Saint, which you know causes it to be disrupted in some ways, but still we wanna make sure that it's in all these core areas. So just as a general rule of thumb, if we go back here, we'll go here, and you can look at the detailed Chrome extension if you want a quick analysis, but basically what we wanna see is we wanna see that the, the keyword is in the title, okay? So best barbecue in St. Louis, it's got it. And like I mentioned, it is because of the period here, so that's gonna throw it off, but best barbecue in St. Louis, perfect, all right? Then we have St. Louis and we have barbecue joints in St. Louis, a variation. That's good too, that'll, that'll work. We have best barbecue in St. Louis in the URL. So overall, title, description, URL, doing very well. Next spot we wanna look at is in the headings, all right? We wanna see it in this first stage one. Once again, very good, best barbecue in St. Louis, all right? And then we've got some kind of informational stuff and then best barbecue joints in St. Louis, once again, the H2. So. I'd say overall, this is this is pretty solid, uh, but once we've got in all the kind of the core areas, then what I wanna do is actually go down here and I wanna make sure that's actually in the first sentence, all right? So I would put that primary keyword right in the first sentence as soon as possible, all right? Very important. And then as far as like mentioning it throughout the content, I just think you should write naturally. And then down here, I would mention it one more time here in the conclusion, okay? So those are all the core, like that's that's like, on page SEO 101, all right? So I would just do that. And then once you've done that, then we can start to get into a little more complex stuff like optimizing for NLP. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is actually go into the page audit section and you're gonna to go to TFIDF. And obviously if you want, you can go to Google and you can geek out about this. So basically this is just a subcategory of natural language processing. Okay, so we're really gonna be optimizing for NLP. That's what we're trying to do here. But if you really wanna simplify this, this is really, the goal of this technical language, the goal of NLP, even talking about it in general is because what we're doing is we're simply modeling what the competitors are doing, okay? We're optimizing our pages in a way that is similar to the competitors that are doing well. So we're just modeling success, all right? That's what we're trying to do. So what you can do with the website auditor, it's really cool is you can actually see all of the keywords that are really critical based on what the competitors have in their content, right? And so really what we wanna do is we just wanna model them, right? This doesn't mean that we're gonna copy their content. It doesn't mean anything like that, but it means we're just gonna make sure that we're hitting on these key topics that are clearly relevant to the core topic that we're going after, okay? So what I did is I actually sorted this uh, by number of competitors. So what I wanted to see is like how many competitors mention 
a lot of these keywords. So really, we want to be looking at the keywords that are mentioned a lot. All right, so we have 10 competitors that mention best barbecue. All right, so out of all the other keywords here, keyword phrases, this one is mentioned the most. So therefore, makes perfect sense that we should also mention it if we want to rank. And, and honestly, a lot of this is not rocket science. All right, you, you don't even technically need to use this level of uh, technicalities to, to achieve the goal that we're going for. But the thing is, is it adds, it makes sure that you're hitting the topics that you need to hit, right? It's just a double check to make sure that we're hitting it the way that we need to. We're not missing anything. There's no gaps in our content, okay? And so it's really for that. It's just to double check and make sure we don't have any gaps and we fill in those gaps and we find these topics that maybe we didn't tackle, all right? So for example, uh, if everyone talked about shaved duck here and we didn't talk about shaved duck, that would be a problem, right? You know, the general consensus for this keyword is that shaved duck, the shaved duck is, you know, one of the top barbecue places in St. Louis. So if you don't mention them, then that's a little odd, right? It's a little weird that you didn't mention the shaved duck, okay? So once again, you can, you can retroactively go to existing content and add more, uh, add more topics into that content based on what you're given here, or, you can, when you're building the content from the beginning, you take all of these topics and then you can build the content using these topics, right? Uh, and so this is, there's just so many benefits to doing this. It makes your, it makes the content creation process so much easier, but it also makes your content deeper and more comprehensive. So go through and start injecting these into the content. And don't just, don't do it in like a lazy way where you just like try to find an area to slap it in there. But like, Sometimes you may find one, like for example, if you didn't talk about the shaved duck, you can't just mention it. You got to you put a, you got to add them to the list, right? You got to add them to the list. You got to create some unique content about it. Maybe you need to actually go to the shaved duck this weekend and try it. You know that's that's important, right? So use this to your advantage, and this is this will give you a good idea of how to go about optimizing. Then you go into the content editor here, and this is really a beautiful tool. You can go in here and you can actually start to inject these keywords in here. It like live, you can do this live, all right? And then you can add this back into your actual website. But if you go to recommended keywords, you're gonna see everything you need, right? And ultimately see how well you've done at this point, okay? And you can highlight everything as well and see where these things have been mentioned. So definitely a really, really valuable tool. And you can just go through, optimize it, and then once again, put it back into your website and republish that content. So now it's perfectly optimized. And now that brings us to the next SEO technique, which is to build more topical authority. Okay, so what you should do now is open up the rank tracker by SEO Power Suite. And then what you can do is you can actually, once you put the site in that you're trying to rank and then you put the URL in, you can actually go to rank tracking and it will automatically pull a lot of these keywords here just by analyzing the page itself. Then you go to keyword map, same thing. You can start to find all kinds of awesome opportunities to build more topical authority. So what I did is I took a lot of these ideas and you can obviously go through and use the keyword research tool here and look for other things. Uh, but one thing that I like to do is once I've gathered all my keywords, I'll put them into a Google sheet like this. And what you'll see is what I'll start to do is I'll start to you know identify the keyword and then start to categorize it. In, certain, in a certain way that makes sense, okay? So what you'll see here is I did by city, I did by place, I did comparison, I did review, I did how to, and I did questions. And I spelled questions wrong, so let's fix that. All right, so we got that fixed. And the reason I'm doing this, and this is not comprehensive by any means, but what I want is I, I want to look at, you know, best barbecue in St. Louis as my core idea. And then I need to think about what other pages can I build that support that keyword, that support that page, but don't compete with that keyword, right? Because we don't wanna have keyword cannibalization. So we only have wanna have one page per primary keyword. So in this case, best barbecue in St. Louis is my primary keyword. So I wanna build support around that primary keyword by building out new assets. Now, you might be wondering, where did I get this relevance score, right? Like, where did I get this from? Uh, and you can see here, we'll go ahead and sort. And you'll see, we can actually sort this by relevance. And I'll show you how in a second. But this is incredibly accurate, this score, right? And I didn't just come up with this. You know, I could, I could manually, you know, assign a score. But what I did is I actually went into ChatGPT and gave it a little prompt, okay? So I've done this a lot, okay? I have, a, I have prompts for relevance. I have prompts for linkability. But in this case, we'll just talk about relevance. 
Uh, and so what I did is I said assign a relevance score one to 10, 10 being the highest for the keyword based on the keyword best barbecue in St. Louis. And then I told it to put it in the table, okay? And then we do this and then it just goes through and assigns a relevance score based on all the data that it has, right? And this is trained in natural language processing. So it's the perfect tool to use to tell you what's most relevant, all right? It's really, really powerful. And so based on this, even when I do a manual check, this is right in line with what I would, I would say, right? This is very, very close. And if we think about it, like best barbecue St. Louis downtown, Okay, so if someone's looking at best barbecue in St. Louis, that's kind of a broad thing because St. Louis, uh, you know, some people refer to St. Louis as the actual city of St. Louis, but there's also the county of St. Louis. And a lot of these barbecue places actually aren't downtown. A lot of them are actually outside of the actual city. So you, this is a different intent, okay? So you wanna have one that's dedicated to, you know, best barbecue in St. Louis. You're probably looking broader at the whole county, but this is different. This is for someone who's actually downtown and they don't wanna have to drive super far. So you would give them kind of a different list. So I'd create a dedicated page for this. This one here, uh, you know, what are St. Louis barbecue? Not exactly the greatest English, but you know, what is St. Louis barbecue is what I would do. And I'd say, you know, what is St. Louis barbecue? The definitive guide for 2023, okay? Dedicated page, once again. Uh, here's a question, does St. Louis have good barbecue? Well, pretty uh, subjective point of view that I could share based on my barbecue experience, right? Does St. Louis have good barbecue? So I would talk about why I believe St. Louis does have good barbecue and also bring up the fact that I've tried barbecue in Memphis and Kansas City and, you know, Texas, right? I've tried all those things. And based on my experience, I can conclude that St. Louis has good barbecue, right? So just to go down the list, you see that these are very, very relevant. And what we start to look at is all these different, different opportunities to build tons of, of just authority around this topic, right? And that's what I think about. Like, I don't just think about building, you know, authority on the whole site. I think about building authority even at a granular level. So like, I don't wanna just be the barbecue authority. I wanna be the, the authority on St. Louis barbecue, okay? And then once I've tackled that and I've kind of tapped out all of that, now I'm gonna say, okay, now I'm gonna be the, the authority on Kansas City barbecue, okay? And then I and then I can, you know, blend those clusters together because it starts to make a lot of sense. So this is the way to go about doing this. And there's so many more opportunities I could have pulled, but these are just some that I pulled just from very quick analysis and using, uh, you know, this very awesome tool, this rank tracker from SEO Power Suite. It pulls all this for you. So I basically just pulled all these based on the data that it gave me. Okay. And there's some search volume data, but a lot of the time don't get, don't get, um, you know, don't avoid keywords that have low search volume because keep in mind, Google search volume numbers aren't hundred percent accurate. All right. They, they can't allocate resources to process all keyword phrases and they're not going to be able to process all of that data. So sometimes you just have to use common sense to really go after these. And truthfully, you know, cause I live in St. Louis, I have a unique advantage, but looking at this, like best barbecue in St. Louis Valley Park, like Valley Park is a very different area of St. Louis. So this would require a dedicated page to talk about just the best barbecue in Valley Park, uh, or even in, uh, you know, the Galleria, like the Galleria is a specific place, right? So these are all different areas where we would need to create dedicated page and even best ribs, right? Best beef ribs in St. Louis. It's so specific, but you would need to create a dedicated page on that just to talk about the best beef ribs. So my general rule of thumb is if, if the keyword has different intent, then I create a dedicated page. It's simple as that, right? And if you're ever in doubt, just go and look at Google. And if you start to see variance in the results, then you know it's time to you know create a dedicated dedicated page but also it's also not exactly a perfect science to do that either right when you start dealing with lower competition keywords or dealing with keywords that uh, are untapped relying on what google shows you can actually be a huge mistake so like we'll just take this one for example best beef ribs in st louis right <clears throat> we'll take a look best beef ribs in st louis and what we're gonna find out here is we'll see if anyone else has actually targeted this. And based on what we're seeing, uh, they have, right? Saint, uh, Yelp has actually has a dedicated page for it. And it looks like TripAdvisor does as well. And then Foursquare. So there actually are a decent amount of, 
a decent amount of pages that have actually targeted that specific one. But once you get down below the top three, it's it's completely open. It's a blue ocean, all right? Because although St. Louis, St. Louis Magazine's ranking because it has so much authority and relevance, but this isn't the most relevant page, right? Someone's looking for the best beef ribs. They're not just looking for the best barbecue. They're looking specifically for the best beef ribs. And that is why these, these pages are ranking so well because they're so incredibly focused, right? And so I've, I've proven this before. Like I have in, in the academy, in Gotcha SEO Academy, I have an example where, uh, you know, Gotcha SEO ranks for iMovie, uh, iMovie review, I think. Hopefully I rank there somewhere. Okay, here we go. So within this iMovie review page, this page was ranking for a keyword called iMovie crashes when importing, okay? So what I did is I splintered off, I looked up iMovie crashes when importing, and I looked at the top results, okay? So just ignore me that I'm there. Let's just pretend I'm not number one. I looked at this and I said, okay, has anyone else actually built a page around this specific issue? And so I started to look and like, there wasn't a whole lot. There was stuff about crashing. There was stuff about, you know, kind of the broader um, issue of crashing, but no dedicated pages for that. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to splinter off and create a dedicated page for iMovie crashes when importing. Get so granular to this one issue. And once, you know, like I said, this keyword uh, on this page, when this page was ranking for it, was like number 54 roughly in the search results. As soon as I published this keyword here, or as soon as I published this this asset, it was like within a couple of weeks, it was number one. Like it was that fast. Because what I did is I, I, I jumped into an untapped keyword that where someone hadn't gone that granular, someone hadn't satisfied the intent perfectly like I did. So that's what I think about is like, just think about intent. Intent is so critical. And you just want to avoid creating pages around the same exact topics, right? That's it, as long as you can avoid that. But as long as it has different intent, that really, really matters. And the truth is looking at this one, like this is a review. So this this page would never rank for that keyword because it's too broad. So we need to get more granular, we need to get more granular. And so it's the same thing with the barbecues, the barbecue stuff, okay? It's the same exact thing. We go over here and we look at it, you know, best beef ribs in St. Louis, I would create a dedicated page for that, absolutely. Um, and in fact, every single one that I have here in this list, the only reason why they're even in this list is because I'd create a dedicated page for each of these, okay? And I'd go even deeper, like in this review section, I'd have a review for every single barbecue place, dedicated review, all right? Because the, the list one's not gonna go super deep, it's gonna go, it's gonna go a little bit broader. So if I wanna go deeper, you wanna learn like everything you wanna know about sm uh, salt and smoke, then I wanna have a dedicated page for that. So this is how you go and build topical authority. This is really the way to do it. Uh, and take advantage of ChatGPT to really help you organize this information uh, and, and you know ultimately prioritize what's going to be the most relevant to that core topic. All right, so thank you so much for watching this video and big thanks to our sponsor for this video, SEO Power Suite. I'll have a link in the description so you can check them out. And once again, please subscribe because I have some really, really cool videos coming very soon. Thank you so much for watching and like this video if you got value. I'll see you in the next one.